Alright, so this is Griffith's quantum mechanics, problem 2.14. Um, he says, so a particle is in the ground state of a harmonic oscillator with classical frequency omega, when suddenly the spring constant quadruples so that the new omega is equal to 2 times the old omega. So we're without initially changing the wave function. Alright, um, so... First of all, what's the probability that a measurement of the energy would still return the value h bar omega over 2? So, for, so um, initially, we have energy that comes in steps like this, n plus 1 half h bar omega. Okay. Um, and so there is a probability, if, if we're in the ground state and n equals 0, of getting h bar omega over 2. Uh, but with the new Hamiltonian, um, which, um, yeah, never mind, I won't write it. So if we have a um, after change, Um, we have E equals N plus one half, but now we have H bar, and now we have a, a two omega here, okay? So, uh, basically what this equals is a two N plus one H bar omega, if you were to look at the, at the original omega, right? So this is all the original omega. All right, so now, um, even in our ground state at n equals zero, we, we only get h bar omega. So, e zero ground state. is equal to h bar omega. You can't go below the ground state, so we have a uh, we, d we don't have any chance of getting the h bar omega over 2 anymore. All right, so the probability that a measurement of the energy would still return the value h bar omega over 2 is 0. All right, so now we want to know, well, what's the probability of getting our new ground state of h bar omega? And uh, basically what we're we're trying to do is expand our original wave function in terms of our new eigenstates with the new Hamiltonian. So because these are complete, you know, they're orthogonal and complete and all that, we can write the, the old wave function in terms of the new one. So if we write out psi old, okay, I'm going to use the bracket notation, which I guess Griffiths hasn't covered yet, but we'll explain it. Um, it's a, a sum, so here's the new, and the old. Okay, so basically, um, this uh, this part right here is an identity matrix. So we just multiplied this by one, right? So basically, what we end up with here are the new kets. So these are the new vectors, um, and uh, and then here's the coefficient part, right? So if we go back to how Griffiths has written this so far. Where the, the coefficients of the new um, the coefficients um, in the new basis are just going to be these. Okay, so this notation is just a way of writing this.
Okay. All right. So basically, we need to work out this integral right here, and and then um, and then we can uh, take the the, uh, the square of it, and we'll get the probability. So let me just write this out. probability of just one of the news the new vectors so if we want to find the new ground state um, I'm just gonna write a zero below this right okay um, so we're just saying if we want to find the probability of the new uh, ground state eigenfunction we have to take the inner product of the new ground state eigenfunction with the old eigenfunction um, from our old square well, right? So our old, um, right, and this is just this. I, I just wrote the square here so we can get the probability. So the inside of this is just this, which is this, All right? Just to, I guess we're jumping a little bit ahead with the notation as far as what Griffiths does, but it's good to see it early on. Um, so we, right, so our, let's write out the old wave function. This is the ground state, right? It was initially in the ground state. And this will all be in terms of old omega. Okay, so we have m omega h bar, and this is to the one fourth power, and then we have e to the minus m omega over 2 h bar x squared. Okay, so this is the old ground state. Alright, so for the new ground state, and, and we're just, um, I, again, I'm going to write this hokey uh, zero underneath here to remind us we're looking for the, we're going to project this onto, um, b basically we're going to find the probability of getting the new ground state. We, did, we, didn't, we wouldn't have to even find this probability. We could ask, you know, what's the, if we go back to our energy, you know, we don't have to say what's the, what's the probability we'll get h bar omega. We could move this uh, from zero up to one, and we get three h bar omega. So we could ask, what's the probability of, of three h bar omega? And then, you know, instead of uh, zero here, we could put a one for the first excited state, and we could find, just based on on this, with a one instead of zero, we could find uh, the probability of getting the first excited state. But that's not what we're asked. So. All right, so the new ground state, right? It's going to be the same as the old ground state, except we have a two omega in place of uh, these uh, omegas. So I'm just gonna put it right in the same spot. New ground state, it's all nice, minus M, and I'm going to just put it in parentheses to make it clear where the two is coming from. We're just replacing old omega with two omega, two old omega, right? It just doubles in size. Okay. All right, so now all we have to do, we'll just take this integral here, and then we'll take the, uh, the square of it, and then we'll have our probability. So, um, So we want to go new is the, the conjugate one, which is this. It doesn't matter. This is all real, right? But I'm going to go ahead and bring the two in front now. Okay, now we put 
put in our old wave function, which is just uh, without the two. So here's the old one. That's where we got that from, right here. All right, so we can do this. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so bringing some of the constants out front, we will have an m omega over pi h bar, and this is now two to one half. And we still have this factor of two, okay, and that's still to the one fourth. And then we have our integral, which um, if we add these two together, we get e to the minus 3m omega x squared over 2h bar dx. Okay. And at this point, I always um, like to look up the uh, Gaussian integrals because I never remember. But if you can remember them, you can save yourself a lot of time. Um, but let's go ahead and skip down to here. And omega or pi h bar to the one half, two to the one fourth. Okay. Now, um, if we if we take this integral. I remember right. So when you have an e to the minus alpha x squared dx, you get pi over alpha under a square root. Okay. So you can look that up and verify if it, if uh, this doesn't turn out. Well, no, I remembered it wrong, but I think that's it. So, um, so where are we? We are doing this integral right here, all right? Um, just right here, I'm going to write what alpha is if we were to look at this. So alpha is equal to 3m omega over 2h bar, okay? So now here we go. We're just gonna plug in this pi over alpha under a square root. So we have a pi on top and on the bottom, we're dividing by alpha, so on the bottom we'll have the 3m omega, and then we'll have a, uh, the 2h bar on the top, and this is all under the square root. Okay, so, um, all right, so this is under a square root, and this is under a square root. We can cancel pi h bar. We can cancel m omega. And yeah, it did, it did all work out. So we have uh, a 2 to the 1 fourth times the square root of 2 thirds. All right, now remember what we were actually calculating was this integral right up here. So to find the probability, and I'm going to write uh, the probability of the new ground state right the probability of our new ground state is just it's the the, um, the square of this inner product okay and this piece inside here is that all right so this uh, probability is equal to just this squared. So uh, 2 to the 1 fourth power squared is just the square root of 2. Okay, and then square root of 2 thirds squared is just 2 thirds. And then when we, uh, and this is, this is our answer, so when we plug this into the calculator, we get this thing that Griffiths tells us we would get. 0.943, okay? 
Great. So there we go.